So section 17 leads on from, you know, how does a, a teacher for God spend his day? And so it's, it's just an extension of it is how does a teacher, how do God's teachers deal with magic thoughts? Now let's get back into what is a magic thought. A magic thought is the opposite of miracles. You've either got magic or you have miracles. Miracle is the natural state. It's your inheritance. It's the conscience, the conscious awareness that you are awareness itself. The self is aware of being awareness itself. The self is the Holy Son of God. The self is the Christ mind. The self is filled with the memory for God or memory of God. What is the memory of God? It's the voice for God, God's Holy Spirit. The self is all of that. The self, once it fully self-realizes as the Holy Son of God and all its dream characters have dissolved into this light of awareness, the self awakens in God. That self, which is I am, awakens and there's no more speaking. There's no more I am because it becomes one with that essence from which it came. So how does a teacher of God deal with magic thoughts? This is a crucial question, both for teacher and pupil. If this issue is mishandled, the teacher of God has hurt himself, and he has also attacked the pupil. And I see many at so-called teacher of God when they start to intellectualize, and someone says something that's not necessarily correct, and they, they judge them, they attack them. I often see people quote, like, you know, they ask me a question, something they're struggling with, and I'll give them an answer. And of course, I'll often give it in a concession, as in ask God's Holy Spirit, you know, ask the Christ mind, and then they'll answer something like, but God and Christ are one. Yeah, sure, you understand that, so do I, but do you know it? It's great to regurgitate something you've read, but if you knew it, you wouldn't be asking me any questions. The knowing of itself would be all you need to know. So they have a tendency, many a teacher for God has a tendency to intellectualize and then attack other intellects on who's right and who's wrong and have these debates and there's a judgment going on. Be very wary. Be very vigilant for right-mindedness that you don't get into that trap of having to show your intellectual egoic superiority, your better understanding, your better grasp on A Course in Miracles. If the course was only written for intellects, well, then salvation would still have many more billion years to go. So don't attack either yourself or your pupil by getting trapped in magic thoughts. Magic thoughts strengthens fear and makes the magic seem quite real to both of them. How to, deal, how, do you, how to deal with magic thoughts thus becomes a major lesson for teachers for gods to master. His first responsibility is not to attack it. You, you can show another way, you can give correction without attacking it. If a magic thought arouses anger in any form, so someone says something and they say, but this is nonsense and Course of Miracles is evil and it's an occult and it's the work of the devil. If you find yourself getting angry and you'd get defensive, teach of God, you've gone wrong. Just go, I'm not willing to discuss this. I choose to see you. I'm not getting into debate with you. you know, and of course, the intellectual will give you some nonsense and some bullshit answer about that and that you're a coward and you're not prepared. I'm just I'm not getting into this debate. I know what I know and I don't need to convince you. If you come to me for guidance and help, I will share with you a new way of seeing it. If you're open to receiving it, if you're open to the possibility that it could work, by all means, go ahead. Don't believe me. Please don't believe me. If you're listening to me for the first time, don't believe a single word I say. If it doesn't work for you, if you can't experience it, if there's no experiential knowing of it, then walk away. Try another way. His first responsibility, your first responsibility is not to attack it. If a magic thought arises, anger and inform God's teacher can be sure that he is strengthening his own belief in sin, fear and death, and has condemned himself. So in other words, you've gone into wrong-minded thinking. If, you, if you're having two opposing thoughts, you're both wrong-minded. Truth is simple and obvious and very clear. 
and it's just the light goes on and the shadow, which is the opposing thoughts, dissolve in the light of that awareness. Okay. He can be sure as well that he has asked for depression, pain, fear, and disaster to come to him. So the minute you go this, the minute the teacher of God you know, starts to strength, strengthen his own belief in sin, fear, and guilt, you condemn yourself. So be careful not to get into those debates. Don't get into debates with dogma. You cannot, you cannot argue non-duality in a dualistic perspective. The two shall never meet. Truth cannot debate illusions. Truth is itself as itself. It doesn't need to prove itself true. You don't need to prove yourself superior. You don't need to prove the course is right and every other religion and every other is wrong. There are many paths that are no different to A Course of Miracles using slightly different words in slightly different ways. And Advita Vendanta, the Upanishads for me, is, is very close to A Course of Miracles. Ho'oponopono, the practice of forgiveness, very close to Course in Miracles. Taoism, Buddhism to a certain extent, it's very close. You cannot get into debate. You cannot get into argument. You know what you know, and you're welcome to share. And if people ask you for guidance, but don't get into mental masturbation with egoic intellects. Okay. Let him remember this. Let yourself remember this. It is not this that you would teach because it's not that that the, the student would learn. There is, however, a temptation to respond to magic in a way that reinforces it. So someone wants to do a tarot card reading or a reading or a psychic crossing over meeting, and it doesn't work for you, allow it to be what it is. Don't get into judgment. You know, don't go to funerals and go, why are you all crying? This is not real. No one's really dead. You need to meet people where they are. Be careful of being insensitive because of a knowing. Because the minute you're insensitive, that's just ego. True self is very sensitive to the different levels of selves asleep. Selves dreaming. And the self is dreaming too if you're judging people as less than intelligent or less awakened than yourself. If you have to ask the question, you know, am I an evolved spirit or an evolved soul or an advanced soul? Or you're not. Self, there are no levels of soul in self. It's all one. And the dream characters are the essence in all of them, the Holy Spirit in all of them, the memory of God in all of them is identical. The essence of every fractured being projected into form, the essence of it, the essential nature of all of it is identical. And it's retained by God's Holy Spirit, the memory for God. It is the self. It is the Christ mind. It is what Jesus demonstrated 2,000 years ago on this earth. No judgment. It is all love. Love meaning the unconditional acceptance of what is and how it is and how all those characters in your dream play out. Okay. So there's a, there's a temptation always. It can, in fact, be easily concealed beneath the wish to help. So we always want to help. We want to go correct people in their understanding. Rather be still and be supportive and be loving and be kind and be compassionate and, and show your empathy. Empathy is not something that you have inside and keep it all to yourself. You demonstrate it through your kindness and your compassion. Nor should it be forgotten that the outcome that results will always come to the teacher and pupil alike because it's always maximum. Don't think of yourself as superior because you happen to be talking. Don't think of a, a, as a student as inferior because they're asking the questions that you know the answer. They may not understand what you understand, but they may be just as loving, if not more loving than you. Be very careful to rank yourself as a teacher. How many times has it been emphasized that you but give to yourself? And where could this be better shown than in the kinds of help the teacher of God gives to those who need his aid? Here is the gift most clearly given him, for he will give only what he has chosen for himself, because you can only give what you know and understand. In, and in this gift is his judgment upon the Holy Son of God. It is easier to let error be corrected where, where it is most apparent, and errors can be recognized by their results. So the answer there is, is let error be corrected. Don't you do the correction. A lesson truly taught can lead to nothing but release for teacher and pupil 
who have shared in one intent. I will to will my will. I choose to remember my capital S self, my holy son of God self. One intention. Attack can enter only if perception of separate goals is entered or perception that you and the student are separate. Okay, you realize that your students that are attracted to you are attracted to you because you've gone through the same path. Whatever hell they seem to be going, you had to be through it or they wouldn't be attracted to you because you have the answer because deep within the memory for God reminds the, the student to find the teacher in equal resonance specificity because that teacher has been through what you've been. So be careful as a teacher of God from judging because you think you're superior because the minute you judge, you're straight back into ego wrong-mindedness. And this must indeed have been the case if the result is anything but joy. So be glad. I look like I look forward to these Wednesdays because I love to share this because it reinforces it for myself. So you're always doing it for yourself or you're doing it for you enhance your self ego image. But everything we do is for either little self or big S self. It's for the shared self or for the little me egoic self. Everything we do. So be very careful, be very vigilant as to who you're doing it for. And very often, many a teacher for God does it for a, a heightened self-impressed image, wants to impress themselves, look at me, I'm a teacher, I'm on a podium. Be very careful of those teachers. Not a judgment, but just be wary that you don't get led astray by their need to be seen in a certain way. This then is easily responded to with just one answer, and the answer will enter into the teacher's mind unfailingly. From there, it shines into his pupil's mind, making it one with his. Why? Because you are projected characters of one dreaming son. One dreamer has dreamt us all up. One dreamer has dreamt up the entire universe. Perhaps it will be helpful to remember that no one can be angry at a fact. And they say, no, it's not a fact. And, well, then they go, no, but it's not a fact. And get into arguments. It is always an interpretation that gives rise to negative emotions, regardless of their seeming justification by what appears as facts. And in this world of illusions, you can work out the composition of Jupiter. Is that a fact? If it's all an illusion? Regardless, too, of the intensity of the anger that it has aroused, it may be merely slight irritation, perhaps too mild to even clear, be clearly recognized, or it may also take the form of intense rage, accompanied by thoughts of violence, fantasies, apparently acted out. And the minute you start talking about religions, that's a very quick way to rouse the anger and you can run around blowing yourself up or chopping off heads or crucifying people. And that's what religion's done for 2,000 years. It does not matter. All these reactions are the same. They obscure the truth. And this can never be a matter of degree. Either truth is apparent, clear, or it is not. It's not partially clear. It cannot be partially recognized. Who is unaware of truth must look upon illusions. What is the truth? You are the Holy Son of God, dreaming. Wake into this fact. Recognize your Holy Spirit. Anger in response to perceived magic thoughts is a basic cause of fear. Because why would you get angry if someone tells you an illusion? Why would you get so defensive, get angry? Which people in religion often do. They get so angry, they go to war and call it a holy war. Consider what this reaction means. And its centrality in the world's thought system becomes apparent. A magic thought, by its mere presence, acknowledges a separation from God. Because it states that must be true, and this is right, and that is wrong, and this is going to heaven, and that's going to hell. It states in the clearest form possible that the mind which believes it has a separate will, it can oppose the will, capital W, of God, also believes it can succeed. And yes, the crux of the matter. It believes it has succeeded. Look at your hands, you think they're hands. Look at your body, you think it's real. Look at your surroundings, you think it's real. Look at the moon, there it is in the sky or the sun, depending what time of the day you're watching this video, there it is. And we're on a planet and we're in a galaxy and we're in a, in, a, in, a, in a solar system and we're in a universe. We believe it's real. So it has 
to such a degree in our reality awareness being become true for us doesn't make it fact and we can discuss fact in a scientific one one plus one equals two fact well if there's only one what is one plus equal to there is nothing to plus it. so in this world fact is not necessarily truth okay they obscure the truth and this can never be a matter of degree it's either either truth is apparent or it is not it cannot be partially recognized so we want to oh, but i think i understand and i'll you know i'll pray once a month and i have one spiritual friend and i'm okay who is unaware of being unaware who is unaware of truth must look upon illusion anger is a response anger in response to perceived magic thoughts is a basic cause of fear why because then it's going to attack me so read those last four lines again consider what this reaction means its centrality in the world's thought system becomes apparent. A magic thought by its mere presence acknowledges separation from God. Okay, let that sink in. Sorry that I read it twice. It's important. It acknowledges a separation from God because then that's why it's become subject, God, object, separation. Yeah, but God talks to me. I'm not saying separation. Non-separation, non-duality is I am in God states in the clearest form possible that the mind which believes it has separated a separated will that can oppose the will of god also believes it can succeed has succeeded in its opinion okay in some way we actually believe we've killed god or try to and now he's angry and therefore vengeful and he's a vengeful god a jealous god and this is the way of duality and herein lies the birthplace of guilt, okay? That this can hardly be a fact is obvious, yet that it can be believed as a fact that is equally obvious. And herein lies the birthplace of guilt. Who absorbs the place of God and takes it for himself now has a deadly enemy. And that's why God is after us. We fear God. And he must stand alone in his protection and make himself a shield to keep him safe from a, from a fury that can never be abated and the vengeance that can never be satisfied. And it started as early as the book of Genesis. Adam is in the garden. He's now done something wrong. And God is saying, Adam, where are you? And he tries to hide from God because he's eaten from the apple. And that's the story of we believe we've sinned. We believe we've done wrong. And we hide from God. And God is looking for us. If we are in God, well, how could God even look for us? He's, we are all part of him. That just shows you that the belief even in those early days is the separation of God, Adam was separated from God. How can this unfair battle be resolved? Its ending is inevitable, for its outcome must be death. And I mean, we've proven it, and we bury people every year. Death is real to us. How then can one believe in one's own defenses? Magic, again, must help. And look at this world, how it wants to, it's all focused on wellness and longevity and you know, skin products and hair products and age products to make ourselves look younger and freshen our skin and live as long as we want to. And we idolize these actors and actresses and celebrities. They look at them, they're 80 years old and they still look 50 and they're a 25 year old boyfriend or girlfriend. We idolize those people and we rush out to buy their skincare products and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's ridiculous how we try and prolong life. Well, you're still only going to live 100 and maybe 20 years and maybe. 200 years from now, you'll live to 200 years and you'll have pulls. Who wants to live forever? Watch Highlander and you'll realize that uh, it's just pointless. Forget the battle, accept it as fact, and then forget it. Do not remember the impossible odds against you. Do not remember the immensity of the enemy, God. And do not think about your frailty in comparison. And so let's just ignore all of this and try and make ourselves look younger and live longer and do all these wonderful wellness things accept your separation but do not remember how it came about and that's the way of the ego because we can't remember having fallen asleep 99.9 percent .9 of the world can't even remember the spirit world from where we're projecting an image into this plasma called the world or the universe so we cannot even remember we don't remember falling asleep you try and remember falling asleep do you remember falling asleep last night 
and you remember going to bed, but do you remember the moment you fell asleep? Of course not, because you go from limited to limitless. And the minute you go into limitless, the limited cannot know itself. Illusions cannot know truth. Believe that you have won it, but do not retain the slightest memory of who your great opponent really is, except as a concept of some fearful God up there somewhere. And as long as you go to church and behave and give your tithings, you'll be safe. Protecting your forgetting into him, it seems it, it, to you, he has forgotten too. And there comes the sense of abandonment. I must have been rejected by God. And that's why everybody in this world feels like a stranger here. Everybody feels that unworthy, not good enough, um, different, not special enough. And we need attention and we need friends and we need to have a million Facebook followers and 10 billion Instagram followers, because if people don't follow us, we're not worthy. And if we're not somebody that people follow, we're not worth being here. God, for, you know, God forbid we just fall into oblivion and no one remembers us. But what you now, but what will now be your reaction to all magic thoughts? They can but reawakening sleeping guilt, and you wanted to bring it to the surface, which you have hidden but not to have let it go. And this is why the self-inquiry path, the forgiveness path of the Course of Miracles is so important. You need to uh, uh, invite the hidden guilt into your awareness, bring it to the surface, and then let the light of awareness, the light of forgiveness, get rid of all of those false shadow illusions. Each one says clearly to your frightened mind, you have usurped the place of God. Think not he has forgotten, so God doesn't forget. He's like an elephant, memory of an elephant. Okay. Yeah, we have feared of, yeah, we have the fear of God most starkly represented. For in that thought is guilt already raised madness to the throne of God himself. And now there is no hope except to kill. Here is salvation now. An angry father pursues his guilty son. Kill or be killed, for here alone is choice. Beyond this, there is none, for what was done cannot be done without. The stain of blood can never be removed, <laughs> you know, like Hamlet, you know, and um, or Ed Brutus. It's, it's Ed tu Brutus. Wash your hands of the guilt and the blood, and anyone who bears a stain on him must meet with death. Into this hopeless situation, God sends his teachers. Yeah, you are. They bring the light of hope, the light of awareness, the light of truth, the, the voice for God, the memory for God, of hope from God to himself. Okay? From God himself to the self. There is a way in which escape is possible. It can be learned and taught or unlearned, actually, but it requires patience and abundant willingness, the greatest thing you can offer. Give that. The lessons manifest. Simplicity stands out like an intense white light against the bl a black horizon, for such it is. So it's just shadows that get unlearned, beliefs that get unlearned. If anger comes from an interpretation and not a fact, it is never justified. Once this is even dimly grasped, the way is open. Now it is possible to take the next step. The interpretation can be changed at last. So choose again. Choose for right-mindedness. Magic thoughts need not lead to condemnation and should not lead to condemnation, for they do not really have the power and should not have the power to anger you, to give rise to guilt. What is guilt? You know, what is anger? Hidden, suppressed guilt. So they can be overlooked and thus forgotten in their truest sense. Madness, but seems terrible. In truth, it has no power to make anything. Like the magic which, which becomes its servant, it neither attacks nor protects. To see it and recognize its thought system is to look on nothing. To look on the ego is to look on nothing. It dissolves. You have to look at it. You bring it into awareness. You don't push it away. You let those emotions and sensations and thoughts come to the surface. And you say, Holy Spirit, Show me a new way to see this. Show me a new way to see this. For, I forgive. Let go. I choose this to be released from me. And if it's a thought of fear and guilt, uh, I'm, you know, I'm feeling guilty over having hurt someone or eventually because someone's hurt me. I look upon them and I say, 
Give me your blessing, Holy Son of God, because it's all you. Inside them is the Christ, and you're calling forth the Christ in them to awaken the Christ in yourself. Can nothing give rise to anger? Hardly so. Remember then, teacher of God, that anger recognizes a reality that is not there. So when you get angry or annoyed, realize you've chosen for the wrong-minded and you've made something that doesn't exist real. Remember this. When you're getting angry or getting frustrated or getting depressed or bitter about something, you brought it into awareness and made it real. Choose again. Remember then, teacher God, that anger recognizes a reality that is not there. It is the anger's certain witness that you do believe in it as a fact. Now escape becomes impossible. Well, not entirely true, but it, it feels impossible for you right now. Of course, you can choose again. Until you see you have responded to your own interpretation, which you have projected on an outside world. Because what is the world? It's a... It's the effect of an inner condition. Let this grim sword be taken from you now. There is no death. The sword does not exist. The fear of God is causeless, but his love is the capital cause of everything beyond all fear and thus forever real and always true.